Hi guys. Another video about the Fuji X106. And also, I didn't get it for photography. I got it for videography. If you want to know more, keep on watching. Another thing, this video is sponsored by Artlist, but more about those guys later in the video. So you're probably wondering who the hell goes out and gets a Fuji X106 for video only. Well, I think a lot more people should. So there are basically two big reasons to why I got this, uh, the Fuji, for video. Number one is going to be the size. It's so easy to bring on with you. It has one lens, it's fixed, it's 35 millimeters. I actually like that about a camera that I'm going to bring on with me everywhere. Reason number two, super 35 millimeter sensor. And that's huge. I mean, I do love my bigger cameras with full frame sensor, but for an everyday carry, this might be the perfect size. And also do not forget that most Hollywood movies are actually shot on a video camera with a sensor of this size. The X106 is maybe one of the most hyped cameras of 2024, but most of the hype is about the photo capabilities of the camera. However, this little beast packs a really heavy punch when it comes to the video features. This camera shoots at 6.2K, which is great. However, it does it to some cost. The mode crops into the sensor and you get a 1.23 crop. The same goes with the 4K HQ. It also has a 1.23 crop. And that is something that I personally don't mind because it could be used like a digital zoom. However, we also get an increased rolling shutter performance. So now I'm gonna look at the rolling shutter and this is probably gonna be the least reliable test that I'm doing here today because it's really hard to get the, the same uh, speed when you're panning but I'm gonna try and do my best and if what I believe is true there's gonna be a big difference and then it doesn't matter uh, exactly how big the difference is. Rolling shutter speed is basically a result of how fast the sensor gets read by the processor. A slow shutter speed warps the image when panning or having fast objects in the frame. If you have really bad rolling shutter you can even see it when shooting handheld. When shooting in 6.2K and 4K HQ, the rolling shutter is hideous, and this surprised me. However, the rolling shutter performance improves a lot when shooting in the normal 4K and 4K60, which is great. If you're shooting on a tripod, then you don't have to think too much about rolling shutter, but it is good to know what you're giving up when shooting in the different modes. Another thing that I am really curious to see, how big is the difference in quality between the 6.2K, the 4K HQ, and also the normal 4K. Is there actually a big difference between those three modes when it comes to quality? My initial thoughts is that I'm probably gonna be using the normal 4K the most. I can definitely see that the 6.2K is slightly sharper than the normal 4K, but I wouldn't say that the difference is huge. So I came to the beach to try out the slow motion capabilities of the Fuji X106, and I'm really interested to see how does the 200 frames per second and also the 240 frames per second look like is it really awful is it really soft is it actually quite usable so i'm really interested because having that slow motion capability and a small camera like that would actually be a great thing so i'm here trying to see look at the water a little bit i'm going to look at the steel that i'm shooting just to see is the sharpness there and also how does the image look in the slow motion I'm ex actually expecting the image as we go up higher in frame rate to maybe soften a little bit but is it usable because it would be a great feature to have with me in a small pocket camera like this. So right now I'm actually shooting in the 16x9 format just to see how does actually Fuji crop the image from the sensor. So do you actually need to shoot in the 17x9 in the DCI format? So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what I believe before looking at the results. I think that Fuji is probably using the same width of or the same width of the resolution but it crops top and the bottom. The X106 shoots in both F-Log and F-Log 2 which is wonderful. 
I really love the image that this camera gives you. The F-Log2 seems to give you a little bit better dynamic range, but the native ISO is 1000. The native ISO of the normal F-Log is 500. In the ergonomics department, there are a few things that you need to know about if you're looking to getting this camera. The beautiful design is something that I do appreciate, but when it comes to holding the camera, the grip is far from optimal. But this is a thing that you have to paint through if you like the small form factor. Any bigger and you won't be able to put the camera in your pocket. One thing that I really don't like is the placement of the ports. They are all on the same side as the handle, which makes it impossible to use the camera while using the audio or HDMI port if you want to shoot handheld. On the next version, I really hope that Fuji changes this because the X106 is a viable video machine. The same goes with the placement of the tripod screw. It's too close to the battery and card compartment. Of course, the main appeal of this camera is probably going to be the size. It's really easy to bring with you if you want to do that. I mean, here you can see this is a really small sling bag. It fits perfectly. And if you want, you can also have it in your jacket pocket with you as well. And also, you're basically bringing a cinema camera in your back pocket. One of the new features on the camera is that it has in-body stabilization. This is great, but don't expect any miracles. And as a Panasonic shooter, it's far from perfect, but it's quite okay. Autofocus is not fast, but workable. And once you've gotten your subject, it doesn't hunt. It's far from industry leading, like Sony or Panasonic, but it's quite okay. Some poopy doopy. So when it comes to ND filters on the Fuji X106, I mean, it actually has an internal a fourth stop ND filter. The internal ND filter doesn't seem to have any color cast and this is something that we actually sometimes see on even high-end cinema cameras. But if you really want to have that perfect motion blur you still need to put on extra ND filters because the fourth stop ND filter even if it's good to have doesn't save you in, in all moments. To actually put on an ND you need some kind of a filter adapter thing and I actually got one here from Haida I think they're called and it also has this Clear Pro Nano filter which will make your camera weather sealed. So when you have a filter like this, I got the silver one, it looks really cool. You can actually go on and put which ND filter you want, which is really nice. So there you see, now I have a variable ND filter. Also this one is from Haida, which is, uh, at least from my testing, really, really nice so far. One of the hardest things about making a great video is finding the exact right music. Sometimes you're lucky and you find the right music straight away, but most of the time it takes a lot of effort. And this is where Artlist makes the search so easy. You can search by genre, you can search by mood, and you can also search by keywords. What happens to me quite often is that I'm searching for music for the projects that I'm working on right now, but I find other tunes that I really love, but they don't work for this project. What you can do in Artlist is that you can actually save that song or those tunes in so-called collections. And once you've saved your songs in that collection, you can, whenever you want, go back and listen to the songs that you once upon a time found and that you really liked. So guys, here's a hack that I would like to share with you. I actually find searching for music on my desktop quite boring. So what I tend to do is to go into artlist.io on my mobile phone, put on a pair of headphones, and then go in and search when I'm going out for a walk. In this way, I can actually go out, move around a little bit, and also get some work done at the same time. So if you are a content creator, Artlist got you covered with music and sound effects and everything else you need to make your videos epic. I don't only use Artlist in my projects, I also use Artlist music when looking for inspiration. Sometimes I hear a song that I like and it inspires me to create something. If you use the link in the description, you will get two months off on an annual subscription. So go get that art list, guys. A thing that really surprised me when shooting with this camera, it has a quite narrow close focusing distance, which will let you take great close-up shots. An extra bonus is that the camera starts up really fast. You won't miss any shots due to a slow boot time. I've gotten quite a few shots in this way that I would not have gotten with another camera. So one of the things that I've really appreciated about using the X106 is the app because it connects quite fast most of the time and once you do that it has really great controls to when it comes to shooting yourself. Like right now I have the camera, I don't know if you can see it, I have the camera down here 
and I'm waiting it to connect. It takes maybe a second or two and now it's connected. I can see all my images and video on it. In those situations when you want to shoot yourself, the app is actually quite handy, even though it doesn't have anywhere close to the, all the features that you can find in the camera. The only thing I wish is that you actually could use the app horizontally. Most of the time I tend to shoot in the normal 4K because I feel that the image quality there is actually very good. Even though it's probably doing some kind of line skipping or pixel binning or it's, it's doing something but I feel that the image quality is so good there so I, most of the time I do shoot, shoot in the normal 4K mode. Be careful with the rolling shutter if you're shooting in that 6.2K. So one thing that really surprised me with the normal 4K footage from the Fuji X106 is that I've only seen Moiré in one shot during this month and I've never seen fringing or anything like that. And that's impressive. So would I recommend the Fuji X106 as a video camera that you can bring with you wherever you go? Well, of course, it depends a little bit on you. Are you gonna be the shooter? Do you want to shoot yourself? Uh, do you care about that extra image quality? Because there are some other options, of course. So you're maybe wondering, where does this camera fit for a video shooter? And when will I use it? It's not as good as my Panasonic S5 II Xs, but it's much smaller. It's not as portable as my iPhone 15 Pro, but the image quality is much better. It's not as good as the DJI Pocket 3 for shooting yourself or content where you're the subject, but it's small enough to bring with you at all times where you know that you might want to take great videos and photos. The iPhone 15 Pro is great, but I only use it if something unplanned happens. The Fuji X106 might actually be the camera that I bring if I can't carry my bigger cameras, but I still want to have great video quality. Also, if you want to see footage or my footage from the X106, I'm going to be making a video called Fuji X106 video footage, cinematic maybe, to make you click. Uh, it's going to be linked in the description and also in the end of this video. So once you've seen this video, check that video as well. And of course, the music is going to be from Artlist. So if there is actually something that I didn't talk about when it comes to the video capabilities of this camera, you know what to do, write in the comments. And uh, until the next video, see you soon.